I want to encourage you this morning, and I think that uh, today, today's message as we continue this series has the potential to really change your life. And not only does it have the potential to change your life if we listen and we obey, but it also has the potential um, to change the course of our church and our ministry and everything uh, together. And so I, I pray that, that you hear that. Um, let's, let's go ahead and pray and get started. And, and, uh, and I'm excited about today. I, ho- I hope you are too. I hope you came ready to learn, to listen. Um, let's pray. Lord, we, we come before you, God, and we're so grateful, Father, that we get to be here another Sunday. We thank you, God, that you always give us something new and something uh, to remember and remind us, too, Father, that there's, there's things that we just need to be reminded. And there's things, Father, that we need to learn. And there's things, Father, that we need to change. And, God, it's all about growing, getting better, and uh, understanding who you are more, Father. So help us to do that today in your name. Amen. Well, I want to welcome you if you are on Facebook Live. Thank you for being here. If you uh, didn't show up because you didn't um, turn your clock back or you slept in, I'm going to pray that you have a bad week. All right? So, no, I'm not going to pray that. Um, thank you for tuning in. I'm, I'm totally kidding with you. Um, we, uh, we're continuing this series called A New Rhythm, and I love rhythm. In fact, I was in a group a uh, long time ago called God's New Creation, and my, my rap name was J Rhythm. So, so I had uh, some rhythm, I, I think, I hope, or at least I thought I did. Um, you get a little older and you lose, you lose rhythm, so um, I think I still have a little bit. I'm at that point in life where I, 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 I want to act like I still have it, but I don't really still have it all the way, so I'm getting a little older. <laughs> um, but this series is all about a new rhythm, and uh, we're talking about uh, how life throws us different curveballs, and it's always changing. In other words, we love conformity. We love uh, the known. We love routine. We love what we have always done. We love the, the, the same breakfast uh, in the morning. We love to know um, the, the same route that we drive to school. We love the same church that we go to. We love the same gym that we go to. We don't like when people come and change things in our lives. We don't, we don't like when things get changed up. And we don't like the, the morning when we wake up and our um, adolescent, our child who was once 12, is now 14, and he smells different, right? And he's acting different, and there's rebellion. We, we, don't, we don't like that, but it happens, right? Because whether we want to accept it or not, whether we like it or not, um, there are different rhythms that happen in life, and some of them are predictable. Some of them we know are going to happen. We know that we're going to get a little older, and we know there's going to come the day where you were once able to look at your cell phone really close, and now you have to back it up a little bit, right, to be able to see clearly. We know that day's coming. We know um, the day's coming when our kids are going to graduate, when our kids are going to go to school. We know the day's coming when they're going to get married. We know the day is coming that uh, things change, uh, maybe, maybe even in our health, and, and maybe we have a history of whatever, and, and we know that the potential of, of, of uh, uh, something coming unhealthy in your life potentially might happen. So we know there's things that we can predict. Um, if we're going to move, we plan, and we know change is coming, so we understand that it's going to imply change. We know and we understand that every once in a while we get sick and we have to take medicine and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so what we learned last week is... Um, That change uh, involves physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual uh, changes. All of those things kind of get shaken up when you go through any kind of a transition. So whether it be a new relationship, a new church, a new job, a a new school, um, a a new field of study, um, a new gym, whatever it is, you're going to go through at some level a physical change a mental change, an emotional change, and a spiritual change. All of these things are going to happen in some more than others, depending on what it is that happens. And we know that it's going to happen, though. And, and there's, so there's things that we can predict, some changes we can predict, some that we can't predict. There's deaths that happen. There's illnesses that happen. There's divorces that happen. There's cheating that happens. There's all this, these things that you can't predict um, that still involve a new rhythm and taking you from one beat and one, one march of life to now I got to run for a little while because this is not going as I planned. 
And again, it involves a physical change for some of us. Mentally, it takes a toll on us. Emotionally, it could be draining these new rhythms. And spiritually, it can be um, uh, taxing on our spirit. And so we know there's predictable, there's unpredictable, and then there's God's rhythms of change. And I, I like to call this God's calling on your life. God's direction on your life. God's prompting to say, I want you to do this in this season of your life. And it's going to involve doing, uh, taking on a new rhythm, playing a different beat, a new pattern is, is what I want to talk about. And here's the difference between um, a predictable rhythm and unpredictable rhythm and God's rhythm. God, in God's kingdom and God's calling and God's rhythms, you don't have to listen to him. Like, we have no choice about us getting older. We have no choice about us one day having to move to a bigger house because our family's growing. We have no choice about going from elementary school to middle school, middle school to high school. We don't have a choice. Those things are going to happen. But you do have a choice when it comes to God calling you. You can say no. And many of us have done that, including myself. I've felt in different seasons of my life, God say to do this, and I'm like, I don't think that was God. I'm just going to keep doing what I like doing. And you have the option to obey or disobey because God's not going to force you to do anything. But what we're going to learn today is I think it's worth obeying God and I think it's worth exploring a new rhythm. I think it's worth getting into a new season, although we don't know clearly what it's going to look like. And we talked about that last week when God called Abraham. He didn't even tell him the details he just said, I'm calling you to, to a place, and, and, and I just want you to be obedient. And Abraham left his family. He left what was familiar. He left his surroundings. He left everything that, he, that was comfortable, common, and, 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 and easy for him, perhaps, to somewhere where he would be unknown. But it was a new country. He would have to adopt, perhaps, a new customs, new, new language, a new way of living. But he was up for it. He was up for it. And so anytime God calls us to do something, one of the things that you're going to realize and one of the things that you're going to understand is when God nudges you, when God says, I want you to call that person, you may not even know what the conversation is going to be about. And God says, I want you to drive this direction or I want you to read my, the word. I want you to start reading the book of Genesis. Or I, you may not even know what the whole book of Genesis is all about. Maybe you have an idea, but when you read it, you're going to see something that you haven't saw before. And when you call that person that God says, I just want you to call, you might figure out later that, Man, they actually needed me to call, and I didn't even know. I just was obedient to you. I didn't, under, I didn't know what that conversation was going to be about. I didn't know if I was motivating them or, or what. And you just kind of listen, and you're going to realize, you're going to find out. And, and I'm sure you've experienced this at some level, that when you listen to God, uh, and you don't know the details, but in the end, you know, and you may not even get them, even in this lifetime, but at some point... Um, for me, what's happened is I'll, I'll, I'll look back and I'll say, there was a reason for that. There was, there was, there was, there was, there was a reason that I, I called. There was a reason that I visited. There was a reason that I, I, I read this particular book or, or I happened to just see this sermon pop up on my YouTube you know, uh, channel and I just listened to it and it was, it was exactly what I needed and God was prompting me and I obeyed. And you have a choice and, and, and my hope is that we would always be a choice that would say, that we would always be a cho church, excuse me, that would say, yes, I, I will be obedient. Do I know? No, I don't know all the details. Do I know that you want me to? I know that you want me to. I, I, I don't know the details, though. I don't know, but, it, but I, my prayer is that we would all be those people, that we would be a church and not just the few that always say yes, but a whole entire congregation that says, yes, I don't know, but yes. I don't know, but yes. I, I know you're calling me, and I don't know the details, but yes. Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, we read this last week, and he's communicating to the church at Philippi how he maintains a focus of forward momentum in the calling that God has given him. And so he says this in Philippians 3, 12 uh, through 14. Um, I was about to read it in Spanish. I have <laughs> Spanish no, es que ya lo ha no, we'll read it in English. Okay. <laughs> Not that I have already obtained all this 
or have already arrived at my goal. He's understanding it's a process. He's understanding that, that forward momentum and change and following a new rhythm is a process. But I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Now, verse 13 Brothers and sisters, and anytime you read brothers and sisters in the Bible, they're referring to other believers because we, re we refer to, our, to each other as family. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. I haven't arrived, he was saying, basically. But one thing I do, forgetting what is what? Behind me, the only way you can, you can look forward, the only way you can keep going forward is forgetting what's behind and straining toward what is what? What's ahead, and in verse 14, he says, I press on, and, and listen to these words, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And so Paul, um, we briefly uh, discussed last week that he had every reason to not move forward and every reason to be discouraged and every reason to not follow God and, and the call that God had on his life because Paul was a former religious leader. He was a former uh, a Pharisee before he became um, a Christ follower. And although he believed in the same God, he persecuted Christians that believed in the risen Jesus because he didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. He didn't believe Jesus was the promised Messiah. And so when, when, when Paul looked at the Old Testament law and, and lined it up, he said, I don't agree that Jesus was. So anybody that's following Jesus, I'm going to persecute them. And he was given authority to do so. And he did himself. And he gave the word for others to persecute the early Christians, which they called the followers of the way. That's what they, they, they were known as in, in, in the book of Acts and in the New Testament. And so Paul had every reason um, to, to not continue to move forward because after he was converted, I don't know if, if you know this, but if you look at a timeline, it was year, it would be years later after Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus when God knocked him off his horse and said, I've called you and he was blind for three days. And then these things like scales came off his eyes and, 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 and that whole process of him converting to knowing who Jesus was, it would be years later before he was allowed to preach his first sermon uh, uh, to, to the early believers because they didn't trust him. They didn't trust him. They said, no, uh, you're not going to. You're the guy that used to kill us, persecute us, make fun of us, stone us. And uh, no, we don't believe you. We, we don't trust you. We're afraid of you. And Paul had to continue to stay focused um, for years until the day that he, he got his opportunity, but he knew that God called him. And he didn't know, he didn't perhaps know it was going to take years for him before he would preach his first sermon, but he waited and he persisted and he, can, he refused to look back and continued to look forward, which is so important because it's why so many of us stay stuck in old patterns. And uh, this series, this, this, the title of this sermon is letting go of the old rhythm or we could even place a pattern in that word in replacement for rhythm but letting go of the old rhythm letting go of the old pattern um our, our old routines because we get stuck in in patterns and and i don't know if you realize this or not but life is is full of patterns there's patterns everywhere around us and in fact if you were to take just a, a square inch of my shirt and, and 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 follow and continue to repeat the pattern you get this shirt it's just a bunch of repeated patterns right um if you uh i like abstract patterns i mean because those aren't always um consistent so that's why abstract art is is, is kind of cool to me but um, how many grew up on some of the old school video games like Pac-Man and, and Mario Brothers and, and all of those, right? And so if you played Super Mario Brothers, you kind of already knew the pattern of level one to get to the, to the king, right? Uh, or to get to the little flag. Um, I used to play Miss Pac-Man. And, 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 and Super Miss Pac-Man. How many remember that one? It was really fast. And it was, you know, all, all, all that stuff. And, and so if you followed the right pattern, right, 
you would, you, would, you would get to the different stages, and no problem. You would get to them quick. And, and how many remember the, another game that I used to love was Galaga? And that was, there was a certain pattern uh, to you, um, especially when you got to the bonus round, the challenge round. You had to have your two guys together, and you had to be at a certain position, and you had to shoot the, the missiles just right, and you would, you, would, you would get all of them in the bonus round, right? It was a pattern. There's a pattern, and so patterns are everywhere, um, and we're familiar with it. We're, f- we're familiar with fashion patterns and, and weather patterns. Um, I don't think the weathermen are, in, they don't know. We know there's patterns. I think they get it wrong. <laughs> um, there, there's traffic patterns, and if, how many know if you leave five minutes late in Denver today, then you could be waiting <laughs> in, longer than you really want to. Um, there's music patterns. When you learn a new song or you learn... Um, a, a new um, uh, uh, words to a new song. It, you only have to remember like the first phrase of the chorus because it's just going to repeat, right? It, it's just going to repeat. And so th- there are patterns. You have sleep patterns. Some of us have great sleep patterns. Some of us have not so great broken sleep patterns. There's organizational patterns. There's a way that organizations run their business to stay um, uh, uh, healthy and growing. There's speech patterns. Um, there's other patterns that are more serious um, or rhythms. We, you know, we, we're interchangeably using that, that term. Um, there's drinking patterns. Maybe um, you're, you're addicted to something and you have a pattern of, of injecting um, uh, 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 caffeine into your system in the morning. Or maybe you have a pattern of drinking something a little heavier at night because it helps you relax. There's different, uh, or there's, there's even abuse of that. There's drug abuse patterns. There's mood swing patterns. How many know somebody that has a mood swing pattern, right? You're like, oh, they, they, they do that every time. No, no hitting no, no elbowing anybody. But <laughs> there's all these patterns, so we get it, right? We get that there's patterns. And, and, and God, one of the reasons um, that we don't, like, like Paul, press on towards the goal is because we're stuck in what? A, a pattern. You're stuck in a pattern. You're stuck. And, and you don't move forward because you keep going in circles, And in Romans 12, 2, the Bible is so amazing because it talks about that. And maybe you've never read this scripture in, in this way, but Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the what? To the pattern of this world. That means that there's a pattern that this world will teach you. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so the Bible itself is telling us that there's patterns that are in this present culture, in this present world, um, that, 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 give, that, this, that aren't good for us, that will keep us from the direction He wants us to go, that will keep us from the momentum that He wants us to build, that will keep us from going in circles. But yet we conform to patterns that keep us from moving forward, pressing forward, as Paul said he did. Because Paul wasn't going to, to allow the pattern of what I did in the past to prevent me from moving into my future. And that's something that we really need to think about as not only individuals, but as a church. Because even the church can be stuck in a pattern. We can be stuck in a pattern of, of we, we sit in the same seat every time. We get there at the same time. We, we, um, we, we kind of know the routine. I know how to just say hi and give a, give a half hug, and, 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 and that's about it. I, 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 I have a pattern, and, 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 and I don't do anything, even though I know that potentially there's, there's potential for help or there's uh, volunteer pro, uh, 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 opportunities. My pattern is I've never volunteered, so I'm not going to vol- start, right? And so there's different patterns, even in the church, there's patterns in your life. We talked about that. But here's, here's the first point. And I want you to really think about all of these because they're super powerful. It's in your notes. We'll throw it on the screen. If you don't recognize your pattern, you will see life as a series of unrelated problems. So, so here's what it looks like. I have relational problems. I've always had, I, I, and, and have you ever heard this one? I just have a bad picker. And go ahead and leave that, 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 that thing up there. Have you ever heard that? I have a bad picker, right? Not a, not a 
Not this kind of a picker, but a bad picker. Like I always pick the wrong person, right? For some reason, I get in these relationships and they're bad and I have a bad picker and I don't know what's wrong with me, right? Or, or, or have you heard this? I'm, I'm just not a morning person, right? I just, no matter what, I get angry in the morning, right? I, hey, don't wake me up early because I'll, you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll throw punches, right? Or I've always had money problems. I've always struggled financially. It just seems like I never, I never have enough. It, I, I always, I want to give to God, but I just feel, I just, I just, I don't think that I'll, I, I can, or I have enough, or, 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 or I'll have enough to meet my needs. I always have car trouble, right? My car, every car I buy is a lemon, right? They're, they're all a lemon. They never work. I don't know what, what's going on. Have you ever heard any of these in your life? Have you ever heard anybody with, it seems like, and it's just, it's like, it's random. And, and maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody you know, but it's like, it's, I'm just like, I'm just, I just have bad luck. Like my whole life is full. I'm just a bad luck person. And if you don't recognize your pattern, you're going to see your life as just a series of bad luck, streaks of bad luck. When potentially, all it is is a series of you con continuing the same patterns. You don't have money because you don't manage your money. Your car breaks down because you don't change the oil, right? You date, you date the good looking and not the good, right? And, and so you, that's why you have problems, right? And so here, here's the deal. Look at this next one. Look at this next one. If you struggle... Uh, and, and, and if your struggles in life uh, were observed, let's change it to the, to the next, next one. If your struggles in life were to observe, if, if we were to get a magnifying glass or somebody from the outside were to observe and, and walk around you 360 degrees and look at all your problems, they could be predicted. If someone were to say, okay, this guy seems to always have issues relationally. This guy can't ever get close to God. This guy um, um, doesn't stay, you know, he, he wants to be in shape, but he, he doesn't. Um, he wants to eat better, but he just can't. Um, he wants to have a good, clean running car, but, but, but for some reason it keeps breaking down. They would be able to observe your patterns and predict why you have those issues. Have you ever thought about that? Think about it. If somebody were to observe your life, somebody who didn't know you, maybe somebody who does know you, and they were to look at you and say, I know why he keeps doing that. You, you might think, it's just who I am. And they're like, no, it's the decisions you're making. It's the pattern that you can't get out of. That's, that's why you keep going back. That's why you keep getting angry. That's why you're broke. That's why you keep, you know, um, ending up where you end up. Because of your rhythm, your pattern that you can't shake. <laughs> is, any, is this good for anybody? Because I know for me, I, I, had to really, I had to really look at this. And I keep struggling in whatever area you're struggling in. I, I promise you there's a pattern that you're keeping that keeps you in the struggle. I promise there is. It's not a series. You, you're not that unlucky. God wants more for you. God has better for you. It's, it's not as complicated. Sometimes we think life is so complicated and I can't figure out how to do things right. I can't figure out the best relationship. I can't figure out um, why my boss always has issues with me. I can't figure out all of these things. But, but it's really a series of not unrelated, but related, repeated bad patterns, bad rhythms, old habits. And I'm telling you, that can happen at any level. And so uh, whether, whether, you're, you're, whether it's for you individually or whether you're listening online, even for your company or even for, for, for your family, whoever, it, it can, this happens at every level of life for our church. We're going to talk a little bit about that next week. Actually, we're going to talk a lot about that next week, what it looks like for a, 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 an old pattern and what it takes for us to change that pattern. Um, it's not unrelated. They're all related by one thing, and it's a pattern. You're going in circles. Romans 5.14 says this, Nevertheless, 
and, and here's why, uh, uh, why we have this pattern. Death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin, by breaking a command as Adam did, who is the pattern of the one to come. And, and that's a whole other sermon, but the reason why we struggle with bad patterns is because we were handed down a bad pattern. Adam sinned. We were born sin in, in, in sin. We were born inclined to do the opposite of what God wants. And the patterns that you have, not only are you, were you born into a sinful nature uh, doing what, the opposite of what God wants you to, but, but maybe you were born with, with a, a pattern of what you learned from your parents and they taught you bad patterns. And they taught you how to drink or they taught you how to mismanage money and they taught you this and, and, that, and that's the pattern that was given to you. So that's the pattern that you continue. But you don't have to. You don't have to continue that pattern. God can break you from that pattern. He can give you a healthy pattern. He can give you a new way of seeing things, a, a brighter future. You don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's a choice. And Adam was, was a bad pattern. And, and we talked again last week about how Abraham, God called Abraham to begin the process of the new pattern, which would one day usher in Jesus through his bloodline to change the pattern of the world and to save by Jesus giving his life for all of us. And so we can have a new pattern to follow after. Not the old pattern, Adam, the new pattern in, in Jesus. And today we're going to talk about the life of Moses with the, with the rest of the time that we have and how he led the Israelites in the wilderness. And if you don't know anything about Moses, I want to tell you a little bit about him because he was a very powerful man um, and, and he had a lot of things going on his, in his life. In fact, Moses, if you remember when he was born, his life was threatened. And at that time, uh, uh, the, the Israelites were enslaved under the Egyptians. And so all the new babies being born, the current Pharaoh was trying to kill all of them because they were, they were growing into a nation, which God promised, but they were a slave nation inside of Egypt. And so the Pharaoh said, well, we're going to have to kill all the males. And so Moses' mom, does anybody remember the story? Puts him in a, in a little basket, sends him down the river. You know, good luck, Godspeed, right? No, I'm sure, I'm sure she was very, that wasn't easy for her. But who found Moses? Pharaoh's daughter, right? And Pharaoh's daughter raised Moses. Pharaoh's daughter knew that, that Abraham, or that Moses was, was, a, was a Hebrew, was an Israelite, but still raised him anyway. And so for 40 years, Moses was raised in Egypt. So he knew the, 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 the Egyptian customs. He wore the Egyptian clothes. He put their little mascara like the guys do. They need, no, I don't know if he did that. But he had the little bang haircut. No. Um, he, he knew everything about what, it, what the Egyptians, um, uh, how they grew up. But here's the interesting thing. He still knew that he was Hebrew. He still knew that he was an Israelite. Because there came the day where one of the Egyptians uh, uh, were, were mistreating one of his people. And it's one thing that, you know, just put a pause right there. One thing that I love about Moses is that although for his entire life he grew up in Egypt, he still knew he wasn't of Egypt. And, and for our entire lives, from when we know God, from when our new birth is, we should remember that we are in this world, but we're not of this world, right? We, we are Christians. We are part of the kingdom of God, and we can't forget that we're not, we, we shouldn't conform, like Paul says, to the patterns of this world. That's a I, we can go that direction too with this message, but, but he knew that he was an Israelite. And so he got mad when, when one of the Egyptians was beating one of his fellow men, and he actually killed him. And so the next day he was, he was out there and he was telling one of his own men, you know, hey, come on, guys, wake up. Let's, 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 let's do things right. And he's like, are you going to kill us like you killed the Egyptian? He didn't know that anybody knew he did that. And so he left. So after 40 years of growing, in, growing up in Egypt, committing the murder, he runs to, to mid, uh, um, uh, sorry, I lost, lost track of my notes. At, at the age of, he, he, moved, he went to Miriam, Midian when he was 40, Midian. And so he escaped there, and he stood there for 40 years. He had left another 40 years. You can divide Moses' life up into 40, 40, 40. 
So for 40 years, he was uh, away from Egypt until the day that God called him. Uh, remember, there, there was a burning bush, and, and, and he, was, he was out uh, being a shepherd, and all of a sudden he saw this bush, and it lit on fire, and God said, it's me, and take off your sandals. This is holy ground. And he called him, and, and he said, I'm going to save my people, and I'm going to use you to do it. I'm going to send you back from the place that you grew up to go rescue the people that you know, and you, you know, God does that sometimes. God does that. He sends you back where you came out of to rescue people because you understand what it's like. And in Exodus 3, 8, here's, here's, what, here's what the Word of God says. It says, and here's God talking to, uh, to Moses. He's saying, so I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land. I kind of like that God uses the word spacious. Like it's going to be comfortable for you, right? Spacious. We all, everybody, if you've watched home, the home network TV, like HGTV, everybody wants an open floor plan, right? I want an open floor plan. That's my, that's my dream home. It's got to be open, right? So God's saying, you get your open floor plan in this land, and, and it's a land flowing with milk, and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And, and some people say even the Cellulites. All right, we're going to get those. They're, they're, no. <laughs> God's saying, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you there. And, and I'm going to rescue you from where you're at. And I'm going to give you some space, some room to breathe, a place to continue to grow. Because you're my people and I've called you. And so they left Egypt, and, and if you read the story, there was a series of plagues that came uh, on, on Egypt, and, and the Pharaoh finally let them go, and not without a chase, though, and they finally crossed the Red Sea. If you remember that, the Red Sea opens up, and the Israelites travel across, and, and, and Pharaoh's army tries to follow him, and the water swallows them up. And then they arrive at this place, if you read the, the, the story, at Kadesh Barnea, in, in about 11 days, they, they arrive there. And when they arrived there, this was basically the border uh, of the promised land. And they sent, um, and, and even before that, I, I, I'm, I get so excited, I jump ahead of this. Even before that, God gave them the law, and, and God gave them the Ten Commandments. That's where the Ten Commandments come in, and all the Old Testament law come in right before this. And so they get to the border of the promised land, which only takes 11 days from where they originally were. And they send out um, 12 spies to survey the land and its people. So they, they, 12 people cross over into the promised land and they're like, all right, let's go see what these people are about because evidently God's going to give us this land and we got to just go do a little homework to see what we're up against. And here's their, um, their response in Numbers chapter 13, verses 31 through 33. It says this, we can't attack these people. This was their response after they came back. They're stronger than we are. All the people that we saw were of great size. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. They said, we can't do this. They, evidently, they forgot about the plagues. They forgot about the Red Sea. They forgot about the manna coming from heaven that fed them every day. They forgot about the large rock that gushed out water to, to give them uh, 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 food and, 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 and and, and water in the wilderness. They, evidently, they forgot about the miracle that God had already brought them out of because they saw these people and were afraid. And they said, we know God has promised us this, and Moses, you've told this, but based on what we see, um, we can't. Anytime you look at things through your human eyes, you're going to say, I can't. And perhaps that's why you, went, you can't move forward is because you're looking at it through your human eyes and you're saying, uh, humanly speaking, I can't do that. I can't get back on track financially. I can't go back to school. I can't volunteer at the church. I can't give my tithes. I can't do, I can't, I can't, I can't humanly speak. But when we look at the things through the lens of God's perspective, you can. But they weren't. And there were only two out of the 12 that said, we can. And that was uh, Joshua and Caleb. And you could read more about them as you get into the book of Joshua. It's, it's amazing. But they said, we can. We can. And, and I want us to be a church full of Joshua's and Caleb's, not of the other ten. Because as long as we're a church that's full of the other ten, we're never going to go anywhere. 
you won't go anywhere personally, and you'll paralyze the church from going every, anywhere corporately. Did you know you have that kind of power in the church? Maybe you didn't realize it, but when you got saved and you became a, a child of God, he enlisted you into his family. And, and when family works together, family's stronger, right? And when family does their job, family gets things done. But nobody likes, you know, the uncle who doesn't do anything or, 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 the, or, 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 or the aunt who, who really can cook but doesn't feel like it, right? Or, 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 the, or, or the lazy, you know, uh, uh, side of the family where they never show up. And when they do show up, they don't bring anything to contribute to our potluck, right? They just eat it all, right? Nobody likes that, right? Everybody wants everybody to contribute because it's better that way. And you, and you paralyze the rest of the family when you don't contribute and when you don't get involved in, in, in some form or another. And then we wonder why churches and we wonder why even we ourselves go through all these seasons, these patterns that why, why is this? Why us? Why us? Why me? Well, we haven't gotten involved. <laughs> so they said they're too big. And, and here's, here's what happened in Numbers chapter 14. And this, this was the result of that, that, that report. Numbers 14, 1 through 4. That night, the members of the committee raised their voices and wept aloud. In verse 2. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And remember, these are the leaders who took them out. And the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Would it be better for us to go, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And... And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Can you imagine that? After God took them out of slavery, after he performed the miracles in the Red Sea, through the Red Sea, in the wilderness, sustained their lives, provided manna every day, met all their needs, gave them water, and they're like, I want to go back. I want to go back. In instead of them saying, you know what? Yeah, we are going to have to fight a little bit. Because let me, let me, in case you didn't know life, you, there's some times where you got to fight for some things. They would rather go back and be slaves than fight for what God has given them. And maybe that's the issue that we have is that we don't want to fight for anything. We would rather conform to what We've always known to what's comfortable. And God's saying, you know what? I'm going to raise up some leaders here. And yeah, your kids are going to be part of the army. And they're going to be better for it. They're going to get strong. They're going to be equipped. They're going to be trained. And when you, if you listen and go to the promised land, it's going to go really good for you. In Numbers 14, 11, here's... God's response to their grumbling. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the signs that I've performed among them? And, and keep in mind, in that day and age, God would speak to the one person and that one person would speak to the people. We, we're honored today in, 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 we're, in that we have the Holy Spirit that lives within us. God speaks directly through us, through, to us through his word and by his spirit. But in that day, Moses was communicating, and he would tell them, this is what God said, how long, how long, how long is it going to be? In spite of everything. And, and just think about that. Everything you've said no to God to, everything you've decided to do your own way, I want you to think about the, that phrase, in spite of what God has given me, in spite of my health, in spite of that I have a place to live, in spite of that he's given me a job, in spite of that he's given me money to live, in spite of I have a family, in spite of um, um, the good friends that are around me, in spite of the great church that really wants to motivate me to be better. 
in spite of, refuse to believe. And again, following a new rhythm is a choice. It's a choice. Elmer Town said this. Uh, he's a professor at Liberty University, and he's also a, a great theologian. He said this. Uh, God had promised them victory. The land he commanded them to go in and take was already theirs. They simply had to trust and obey, but this is what they did not do. God will never lead us where his grace cannot provide for us or his power cannot protect us. Indeed, the Israelites had seen the powerful hand of God at work during the plagues and miracles of the Exodus. Yet, like many people, they walked by sight and not by faith, and their unbelief displeased God. And we all know without faith, it's impossible to please God. Their failure to believe in God's word kept them from entering into the promised land. This truth has never changed. It's never changed. They went in circles. And think about it. Do we not all believe God is good? Would we not all say God is good? And most of us would answer all the time, right? We would say yes. And, and why in the world would we ever not trust God to take us to a better place then? Why in the world would we not listen to him when he says to give to me, to participate in the ministry, to participate? Why in the world would we not do that? if we know that he's using these things to make us great and to take us into a better place, why wouldn't we do that? Why would we say no? Why would we try it on our own? It, it, it's crazy to think that. And they went in circles. They refused to change their rhythm. They lived in the same mental patterns of slavery. We were so used to being slaves under the authority of a foreign God, of an unknown God, of, of, of a pagan God, that I don't want to submit my authority into, under the true God. And that's really what we do. We, we go back to the old pattern of, of the God of, 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 of bad relationships, the God of, of drinking, the God of substance abuse, the God of, of, of uh, uh, wh whatever it is for you, you fill in the blank. And we don't believe God for his new rhythm and his new pattern that he wants to take us in. We want to be a slave to the old things. And this is why they were unable to, as Paul said in Philippians 3.14, press on towards the goal. They kept looking back. Paul says, the one thing I do is not look back because when I look back, it seems easier. It seems like familiar to me. It seems like I would just rather die doing that than do go forward and keep pressing on. Some of us, we don't, we don't like what we're seeing in our lives. We don't um, like what our lives are producing because we, we become discouraged. And you need to know that God will bless you, but you have to change your patterns. Um, if you're following along, let me give you this one point here, this next point. The enemy, uh, listen to this. The enemy makes us think that changeable, a changeable pattern is a permanent problem. Some of you think that you're just unlucky. You think that um, I just am never going to be able to, to focus on reading the Bible. Um, and go ahead and leave those up there for me what, when we go through them. The enemy makes us think changeable patterns is a permanent problem. We just think it's permanent. I'll, I'll always be unlucky. I'll always deal with, with these issues in life. I'll always have the same problems. I'll always deal with the same struggles. And the enemy wants you to believe that. He wants you to believe that, yeah, you're just an angry person and you're always going to be angry, right? You're always going to have struggles with money because that's just the way life is, right? You're always going to struggle with, with relationships because life's people are imperfect and, 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 uh, and, and that's, that's just it, you know? And the enemy is going to make you think that a changeable pattern Something that could change is a permanent problem. It's not permanent. It's not permanent. You've made those decisions to make that pattern what it is, but it's not permanent.
permanent. It's not an identity. You, didn't, you weren't born with a bad picker. You were born with making bad choices. That's your choice. You're the one that, that made that choice. And you can't wrap God around that and say, I, 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 I'm going to somehow force God's will in this bad choice either. You can't do that either. The enemy wants you to believe that your changeable pattern is a permanent problem. That's a huge statement right there. If you, if you didn't hear anything else, remember that. This changeable pattern is not permanent. It's changeable. If you don't like the product, <laughs> then you have to change the pattern. You, the, nec the next point is this. You can't confuse your destiny with a changeable pattern. Some of us, again, and it's the same thing said, just a little bit different. We think we're destined to be poor. We're destined to be broke. We're destined to be um, um, just in, in a miserable marriage. We're destined to, to, uh, to go from relationship to relationship. We're destined to, um, to have a car that doesn't work. I don't know what it is for you. You're, you're destined to be angry. You're destined to, to, to never change uh, the health of, of your life. You're destined to, uh, uh, to be unhealthy. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is for you. But don't confuse your destiny with something that you could change. You're not destined to be anything that God didn't want you to be. It doesn't want you to be. You could change the pattern. God will help you change the pattern. But he's not going to do it for you. So many people, you know, we, we attend church or we think that just by being at church, you know, that, that's enough. But, but it's, it's actually making the changes and, and deciding to live the way God wants us to live. That's, that's where the change is coming. We might feel good coming to church, and we might leave like, I, I, I feel better because I went to church. But that feeling will go away in a matter of hours or by Monday or Tuesday, and then you'll, you'll be back. But God's saying, when you, when you come to church, learn, apply, change. You learn, you apply, you change. The last thing, um, don't interpret your decisions as your destiny, another way to say the same thing. I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to say the same thing a, a few different times. Some of us think our, our bad luck is, our, is just our, our characteristic. We were born. That's, that he was born like that. No, it's not. Your, your, your decisions is not, don't interpret your, your decisions as your destiny. No, change your decisions. That'll change your destiny. You can't use the excuse and you can't give others the excuse that you know around you, the person that would say, I'm just an angry person because just like somebody would use that excuse, that's just me, there's also somebody next to them that might be saying, yeah, he's just angry. You know, I know how to, you know, I just got to back away when he gets like that and then come back. No, he's got a pattern problem and you need to point it out to him. Evie points out all kinds of pattern problems in my life. and She's really good at that because she loves me. She loves me. I won't be able to teach a class or preach a sermon or, or get involved again. I, and I, You're hearing me say this over and over again because I'm trying to give you a pattern to follow here, right? I'm not a good student. I can't go back to school. I can't focus, and, and, and we all know focus is, possi is possible because you can binge watch something on Netflix all night and focus on whatever it is that you want to focus on, but when it comes to the Bible, you just, you just, you don't have your mind or your heart set, so you can't focus on it, right? There's no such thing as ADHD or blah, 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 or whatever that, right? That, no, no, you could focus on whatever you want. Ask your kids. They focus on games for hours, you ask them to do something that takes five minutes and they throw a fit. It's like, dude, you were just playing for how long and you can't stop for five minutes and focus on cleaning your room? You know, like, you know, we perspective. And I'll, I'll never be good at getting up early in the morning. Well, then go to bed early, right? Okay. She already said it for me, right? 
I'm not a morning person. Well, maybe it's because you stay up late and you drink caffeinated drinks and you, and you play on your phone until you drop it on your face, right? You're so tired. And then you wonder why you can't get up early, right? I'm not a morning person. Well, go to bed or change your pattern. Change it. I'll never be good at working out. I'll never be good uh, at reading because my mind wanders. I just want to listen to the Bible, not read the Bible. And there's, there's a benefit to both, but reading is, is, is always going to be better. I just can't focus. I'll always be in this bad marriage. And I'm not suggesting to get out of the marriage. I'm saying taking, changing your pattern to make the marriage better. All right? Don't hear me wrong. I'll always be tired. I'll never be able to afford to give or tithe. And, and think about this. And, 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 and again, maybe I'm throwing a few rocks today, but every once in a while we need to do that. Um, if, and I want you to think about this, in good or negative. If everybody gave what you gave or gave what you didn't give in the church and everybody duplicated what you did for the church from a financial standpoint, how long would the church last? Think about that. Because if everybody gave the way you gave, the church would be very well funded. If everybody didn't give and they did exactly what many of us sometimes don't do, the church, we would close the doors in a matter of months. But it's all about <laughs> our patterns and believing God. That I haven't done this before, but I'm going to do it now. So what rhythms do you need to change? What patterns do you need to change? What needs to happen in your life for you to stop looking back and for you to press on towards the goal that God has for you? I want to pray for you this morning that you would make some real choices in whatever area of life that God is prompting you and whatever part of the message that said, that's me, that's me. Um, I need to change this. I need to develop a new pattern. And I want to pray that God give you the strength and the courage to do so. Can I pray for you? If you're listening online, I'm praying for you too. Lord, we, we come before you, Father, and we ask, Lord, first of all, even before we ask, we, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being a God that um, uh, is, is, is our creator, our savior, has given us everything, Father. And Lord, we um, believe in you and we honor you. We worship you. And Lord, we also ask, Lord, that um, as you've shown us through your word, that we would change our patterns, Father. Lord, there's so many of us that we just keep doing the same thing and, and we, we don't want to change. We, we refuse to move forward and we give, uh, we make excuses, Father, for um, uh, not being able to do something when it is really just a changeable pattern. And so, Lord, whether that be personal, maybe a, maybe a personal uh, 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 addiction a pattern, Father, or whether that be even just helping out, Father, in the ministry, Lord, I pray, Father, that that, that, would, be, um, that would be something that you would prompt somebody here to do, Father, or many of us. God, you love us so much, and we... Um, we're grateful, Father, for your love. We're grateful that when you sent Jesus, Father, that he was the perfect pattern for us to follow. And Lord, we're going to talk about that next week, Father, for our church and for what the example that your son gave us. But Lord, right now we thank you for, for his life. Jesus, we thank you for coming. And we thank you, Lord, for resetting the old bad pattern into a new pattern. We thank you, Lord, that we get a chance to be um, your children. And so, Lord, I, I ask, Father, for each and every person that's here, Father, that we would uh, take into deep consideration, Father, what we've learned today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you to stand, and we're going to sing one, one last song, and I want you to continue just to meditate. If you need any prayer, we are here for you. Um, we would love to come. You can come forward and we could pray for you.